Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on logarithms and non-linear data on a Casio FX CG50. We're going to have a look at how to graph and solve questions involving two variables that have a non-linear relationship. Let's take a look at the question. We've got the data in the table below follows a trend of the form y equals a b to the power of x. So there's an exponential relationship between the variables y and x there where a and b are constants and we've got the data in the table firstly we have to complete the table of values of x and log y giving our answer to three decimal places and we've got a table to fill in there the values of x remain the same and we have to find the log values of y we're going to get the cg50 to do that for us we're going to use the calculator to plot the graph of log y against x and draw in a line of best fit and then lastly, we're going to use the calculator to find the values of A and B. And we're going to have a look at two ways of how to do that. So let's start by inputting the data into the calculator. We're going to go to two statistics from the menu. And then in list one, we're going to input our X values. So 0.5, 2, 5 and 6.5. And at list two, we're going to input our Y values. So 737.4, 1768.5, 9119.2, and then lastly, 26,562. So to answer part A in there, what we need to do is we're going to populate list three with our log Y values that we could then fill in uh, our table with and we're going to get the calculator to find these all at the same time for us if you go up to the top and highlight list three we are going to find the log of all the values we're going to use this button here the log to base 10 or the common logarithm button if you do need a, a logarithm with a different base that is accessible if you go to if you press option and then go to f3 calc f6 to the next page and then F1 you have a log to any base button so if you do need a base other than 10 that's located there but we just need base 10 so we press log and then we want to find the logarithm of all the values of Y listed in list 2 so we're going to use the list here so it's option and then F1 for list and then 2 list 2 and execute and you can see that the calculator has populated list 3 with the values for log y, which we could then copy into our table and complete. Okay, onto part B, we're going to have a look at graphing these. So we need to go from the menu, we need to press F1 for graph. Now I reset the calculator before having a go at this. All three graphs currently are in the default settings. So we just need to go to set first. So press F6. And you can see graph one is set up here. We're gonna keep the graph type as scatter. Now currently graph one has the X variable as list one and the Y variable as list two. I'm actually going to keep that as it is so we can compare the difference between the two graphs. And we're also going to use that as well for part C. So I'm just going to keep graph one as basically the graph of the top table that we have here, X against Y. And then if we change to graph two, F2, uh, currently that's still the same by default but we need to change the y to be log y so log y was list three so we've changed that to list three f1 for list and three so that will plot x against log y which will be the table that we have filled in okay so if we exit let's have a look at graph one first which is the graph of x against y and although there's only four plot points you can see this exponential curve that's going on with that graph x and y have that exponential relationship there and you can imagine that taking shape between the points that we've got and if we have a look at graph 2 where we've plotted x against log y you can see now we've got almost a straight line that's going on here so we've changed it to be a linear relationship between x and log y and if we want to draw a line of best fit on there if we press F1 for calc and then X for a linear relationship and we have the relationship that, that fits in well with A plus BX. So I'm going to choose uh, F2 from this option here and you can see we've got uh, A and B here. We're just going to come back to those for part C but initially to draw the line we just press F6 to draw and you can see here it's just drawn on the line of best fit i.e. the regression line 
onto the graph for us. A couple of things to note here that if we have a look at the intercept, it's going to be, well, it's less than three. It's going to be about 2.7 there. That will be represented by the A value that we get for our equation of the line. And the gradient, the steepness of the line that we have here will be represented by the B value. So if we, if we go back and have a look at those, F2, then we can see A, yes, it was about 2.7. We can see that from the graph. And then B, our gradient there is 0 0.255. Now we are going to need these for a calculation and unfortunately if you just press copy here that just means we're going to get a copy of this linear graph and take it through to the graph mode. So I found the easiest way is just to write down the full calculator displays here and re-input them. So just take a moment to write those down if you're following along. Comment below if you know how to copy these variables or store them in as that might be a little bit quicker and more convenient but let's just copy them down and then we'll just write them out again. Now, if we press exit and just pause for a moment from here, I'm going to use list four as a bit of free space just to do a calculation. Now, what's slightly confusing and what we need to just be very careful of is those values for A and B aren't our final answer for C, where it says find the values of A and B. That's because we're still working with the logarithm of Y. So this is actually log A and log B that we have as our answer so far and what we've got to do is we've got to inverse that logarithm we've got to do the opposite of it to find out what a and b are from the original equation that we had y equals a b to the power of x so we need to do the opposite now we had log to base 10 so what that means is we need 10 to the power of i'm going to use this convenient button here so shift and the log button inverse functions It'll give me a little 10 there. I just need to write out the power. Incidentally, you can just write out 10 and then use the power button if you prefer. That's going to be absolutely fine. And the power, if we're working out A, let's say we work out A first, is just going to be that full value that we had for A. Remember, that's truly log A. Uh, so that's 2.73227 and so on. Try and keep it as accurate as you can. Press execute. And then we have a calculation here. Let's just go up to have a look at it in more detail 539.849 and so on about 539.8 or 540 whether we want to go to one decimal place or the nearest hole that's going to be our actual a so our original a from the equation is 539.8 and let's do the inverse for b shift and 10 to the power of and b was 0 0.255 and so on. Again, use as many decimal places as you can just to keep it as accurate. Press execute and here we've got our B, our actual B from the original equation, 1.79899 and so on. It's almost 1.8. That So if we wanted to round it to one decimal place, we'd say 1.8 there. Now I did say that there's going to be a second way that we could find those and we can actually find those directly if we prefer, by looking at list one and list two, where we have the original relationship. So if we just press F1 for graph one and take a look at that again, press F1 for calc. Now this time we don't want X, it's not a linear relationship, remember, it's an exponential relationship. So if we press F6 and we want F3 for EXP. Careful, it's not a logarithm in our original equation. So it's, it's not originally a logarithm here. It, we use logarithms to help us find the solutions, but the relationship is exponential, so it's F3. And if you notice here, we've got A, B to the power of X, which is what we had in our original equation. So F2 here. And you can see that the A and B that we have are almost the same, very similar, just a slight difference in some of the later decimal places there. I think that's down to rounding. Other than that, they're the same values there. So certainly if we're now giving those to one decimal place, 539.8 and 1.8 are still going to be the same values there for A and B. It might be better to find these the initial way that we had a look at, 10 to the power of, and write that down as part of your working because that is the way that you would find it out. But this is a quicker way and it's a great check afterwards as well, great verification. 
uh, if we want to check that we've got the right values of A and B. So there we go, how we can use the FXCG50 not only to produce the table of log values really quickly, but to produce a graph and to find out and solve uh, the values of A and B on an exponential relationship. Don't forget to like and also subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.